I'm here to show you how to examine a child. Well, a child that you know based on the age of one year to 18, but in general, we classify them into the infants, the toddler, the preschool child, the school age child, the adolescent. The lady, the one the lady I have in front of me is a school age child, so this. And the first thing you have to do is to make rapport with your clients, your patients, greet them, greet the mother. Of course, you have to get permission to examine them. Are you cold? The room is cold. Oh, you are okay. You are not feeling cold. How are you? Yes, and then. Um, I think you have spoken with Solis and Solis. Solis, I don't want to sit down. Are you okay? Okay. Um, so, I've already made a call with them. Solis is actually a patient on the ward and she's kindly, she, she and her mother have kindly agreed to take part in this exercise. First, you have to establish the degree of illness or awareness of the child. Is the child looking well? Is it she looking ill? Very ill, moribund. Uh, is this an emergency or is this something you can take your time with the examination? Obviously, the child is, is uh, um, moribund and needs urgent attention. You have to cut your examination short and see to the child, establish uh, that the child is uh, going to survive before you continue with your examination. Then the next thing you do is to get a quick um, idea about the mental awareness of the child, assessment of the child. So I just asked Sully, so Sully, so how old are you? Nine years old. You're nine years old. Now what school do you go to? Pastor. Pastor school and you're in class. Class three. That's nice. What do you like best in school? Is there anything you like your teacher, your teacher or your subject? What do you like doing in school? Reading. Yes, so Sully so likes reading. Good. That is good. And what's your teacher's name? You know your teacher's name. Teacher's name. Okay, you just started the school. So this is nine years. She's in class three, eh? Which is um, appropriate. Because then the next very important thing in pediatrics: children are growing people. So we always have to check their height and weight and compare it with the height and weight of other children of their age. So, so this will now come onto the scale for me. So this now you come down. And as she comes down, I'll check whether she can walk properly. Yes, you can observe her gait. Yes, stand on the scale. But now we measure in kilograms from we are using the SI units. And so this weighs 20 kilograms. This scale is in kilograms of red. And then the blue is in, it's in pounds. But we use kilograms. And so this is 20, just comes from the 20 kilograms. So, so this can come off now.
and the height for length. In general, children who are less than two years old are measured lying down, so this is their length. And children who are over the age of two, like soldiers, are measured standing up, so it is their height, the standing height. Okay, so that is the height. And when we have got the height and weight, we have chart, charts which we can plot it on called percentile charts. Or we can calculate the z scores to see where this child falls in, in with regard to other children of her age and of her sex. Now we are going to inspect. We start with the face. First. The face. We look at the expression. This child is quite an alert. She is, she looks intelligent. She doesn't look depressed. She's been smiling a lot. And if there's any discharge or discoloration, you look at the nose, see there's a discharge, you look at the mouth, see there's any abnormality there, and then the ears, you see there's any gross abnormality. So you look at the eyes and see whether the conjunctiva, this which is this part of the eye, which looks pink in her, is looking pale. That is examining for pallor. She opens her mouth, open your mouth for me, show me your tongue, uh -huh. and put it back in. The tongue looks pink, the child has got an in yeah. 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 Look for pile of on the tongue. Her tongue is pink. Okay. Alright. And at the eyes, do you look for joints? You examine the child for joints by asking her to look at your hand, look down at your hand, look at my hand, look down. While she lifts, up the top eyelid so you can see the whites of the eyes very clearly and see whether it looks yellow. This child does not have jaundice. You also look for blueness or cyanosis, which suggests either a usually a congenital heart disease, cyanotic congenital heart disease, or sometimes respiratory disease. And for that one, you look at the tongue again, which is okay to see again. Look at the inside of the lip, which should look pink like this. It may look blue when the child has got this congenital heart disease or sanity, congenital heart disease or severe respiratory disease. We look at the head to see the hair, the shape of the head. If this, if Solis was younger, under the age of two, I would have measured the head circumference, which is we measure the occipital frontal circumference. Or even though she's a bit older, then we are still show you how to measure the head circumference later on. On the head, we look for the hair, see whether the hair is black or dark or brown, silky, which might which would indicate malnutrition. Whether it's a stress on the head, which would also indicate malnutrition. We look for things like, like sores on the head from boils. We look for ringworm on the head. We should, we should actually examine also to see if the child has one head lines, but we don't often do that, but it's also something that we should do. On the eyes, we look for the color of the eyes. We look at the eyes to see whether they are the conjunctiva. To see whether it is pink. You can see that this child is nice and pink. If the child is anemic, it will look pale. Then we look at the sclera, this part of the eye. It's white on the eye, it should be white. If it is yellow, it means that the child has got jaundice. We look for any marks on the face, driver marks or scarification marks, not so much driver marks, but more scarification marks. The child has had some illness there, and the child has had marks there, you know, traditionally as a form of treatment. Then we look for any swellings around the neck, under the jaw, on the face itself. Just you look to see if there's any fullness or swelling. Sometimes you can see a visible swelling on the neck or on the around the neck, under the neck here, under the chin, on the jaw. You look for swelling in any of those areas. Then the next thing we we'll do is to examine, fill the neck. Examining from the back, lymph nodes. You look, you, feel, you can see, you can feel them. Sometimes you can see them; they are big. 
we can feel them by feeling the back of the ears, the nape of the neck here, go under the chin to feel for the blue. You are, you are looking for both lymph nodes and salivary nodes. So lymph glands and salivary glands, see they are enlarged and you feel for the neck for them. This young lady does not have any practical. She has some small ones, but they are not like, um, they, they, look, they feel normal. When we are palpating for the nose, we also look for the thyroid gland, which is we often, we don't often feel in children, unless they don't have the thyroid system. So in palpating for the lymph nodes, we also palpate the axilla. We palpate the axilla. You can do it with the child lying down or sitting. You palpate the axilla. You feel, put your hand against the it's ticklish against the axilla and you move your hand up and down you feel the roof of the axilla and then you feel against the, the arm here to see if there's any glands you can feel you do it for both the right and left axilla and then you get the child to lie down and you practice the groin lie down you look for if you practice the groin for lymph nodes as well. I'm not going to expose the child, but you feel this is you pipe the groin here, the lymph nodes on both sides. I think you want to take a far. Let's take this far. Thank you. And then just you have to feel the groin to see whether she has Maybe she has some fibre but they are small and they are not tender. As much as possible, you are perfect, you look at the child's face, you see if you are causing pain. Yeah? And then you see there is no tenderness there. And there is no enlarged lymph nodes. So that is vibration of the brain. Those plants, cervical, axillary, and body nodes will tell you whether the child has got a lymph adenopathy or adenitis. Then we are going to examine the skin. So for this, I'd like to just look at the skin to look for the dryness or rash. Look for a rash. And Solis has got some the papular rash on the back of the neck here and the top over the shoulders. And that is more likely to be a heat rash and over the front of the chest as well. These are the papular rash, which most of which are good. And I think this is just due to heat. So you look for rashes, you look for discoloration. The child may be, um, you may have areas of hypopigmentation or hyperpigmentation. Look for birth, something we call birth marks, which may be, we call, which are hemangiomas actually. We look for this um, pigmented patches like cafe or lace spots, which you come across later, which may be indicated as. Um, and some condition that the child has. She does not have any. So you examine the skin for, for all those things from head to foot, looking for rashes. So it's can you lie down for me, please? Looking for, this, for areas of hypopigmentation or hyperpigmentation, like this one. Not one here, but it looks more like a. a it, might, it looks more like a scar from a healed sore or something, which can also be areas of hyper and hyperpigmentation. And she has a scar here, which looks like it was a healed cut. So there is no cafe or lace spots or any of those kinds of things. And then you look at the hand of the child, see whether it's pain. You have to compare it with your own or with people around you if you are pain. To see whether the child is paler than yourself or pinker than yourself. When the child has been crying, the eyes are not going to look at your color. If they've been eating something, or the tongue will not look good for color, if they have got, or if they have got an infection in the mouth. So you, know, you may not be able to see whether they are pale by looking at those two. And you also have to look at the hand to see whether the child is pale. You look at the hand as well to see whether she has any abnormality like the single palma crease, which is this mark here, but you only have one of it, which suggests that it has only 21, which is also called Down syndrome. Then, um, then on the hands, you look at the fingernails for clubbing. 
Clubbing is, this child has got no natural presence. Clubbing is when the, the ends of the digits look as if they are forming a club, that, which is an implement that the people uh, use to hit other people, um, or the police use, or the cavemen used to beat their wives up, I, I think, towards the club. <laughs> um, and if the child, if the, if the, if the curvature of the hand, hands, I think for clubbing it is actually better to see club fingers for, to explain it. But we will tell that they are clubbing by looking at the curvature of the fingers, by looking at the, uh, the size of the end of the fingers compared to the rest of the fingers. By looking at the angle, put your fingers like this. You like this, let me see. Can you do this? Let's see the child to put the, the thumb together, and there should, the, there should be a gap between them. Now you can see there's a gap here. I think there's no clubbing. I think there's clubbing, the gap is obliterated. This is called the diamond sign. It's supposed to be shaped like a diamond. To see whether when you press the nail, then you see it will go white, and then you see how soon it becomes pink. And the time it takes to become pink will tell you something about whether the child has got we call this capillary lift, and to say whether the child has got anemia or whether the child is in shock. So it is often used for those reasons. Then coming to the lower limbs, we look at the, the, the legs. We are looking for a dreamer. If the child has got um, some condition, for example, like some kidney, con kidney disease or severe malnutrition or some cardiac disease, they may have swelling of the feet. So when you put your finger to press the dorsum of the foot, you see that it goes in pits. It's called pitting edema. And here, it's called pitting edema. This child does not have it. You have to press over the bony points of the feet, like here, and over the malleolus here, over the shin, and see if there is any dimpling of the skin. Sometimes you may not see the dimpling of the skin, you may rather feel it. So you press, and if you feel it, the dimpling, then you say there is a dimple. And if you find it, you have to press right up to the point where there is no more pitting. And then you say that the child has pitting the dimple. For a child who has been lying down, the feet may not be swollen, so you have to look at the back. And you look at the back for the same thing. You put your finger at the same top and you do the same thing. You press in and see whether there is fitting there. That's called sacral, sacral within. For young babies who have not yet sat up, for more children who have been in bed for a long time and they are not in the The three pits and the circles are the back rather than the Sometimes. So that is what we look for. It's important that you do the general examination first. Then the child will see. No matter how busy you are or how hard pressed for time, general inspection and palpation are very useful to do. Um, you don't usually auscultate um, an upper course unless you for general examination as such. But inspection and palpation are very important. I think I would like to say thank you very much. So, um, you can put your clothes back on. So, um, I would like to say thank you very much. You've been very good. Hmm? And um, so, this concludes our general examination.